you all about um, professional networking today. I coach students on this topic a lot. I'm so super excited to dive in with you all. Great. Thank you, Colby. And I just uh, hit the recording button, so I'm just going to uh, quickly <laughs> reintroduce that we are here for the uh, Tap Into Your Terrier Network, the power of BU Connects for, um, for professional networking. So um, we have a, uh, we're going to be presenting about um, about BU Connect, but we'll also cover all sorts of networking um, networking topics for you. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, uh, share my screen here. Just um, just one moment. All right, um, and hopefully, Colby, does that look okay to you? Looks great. <laughs> okay. I think, I think, I think we're good now. <laughs> um, all right. So, quick, uh, quick overview of what we'll be talking about today. Um, we'll be doing a tour of BU Connect. Hopefully, um, hopefully, many of you who are live here on the presentation have already joined BU Connect. Maybe, maybe you've had a chance to use it and just want to know a little bit more about the uh, the ins and outs of how to use it to its full capacity, uh, but we'll also talk about different networking strategies um, and features of BU Connects as well as LinkedIn that you can use to um, to really get the most out of your out of your networking. Um, and Colby, yeah, so. Often when we're talking about networking, it feels like this scary, intimidating thing, right? Of like, oh my gosh, I have to network. Um, I meet with students all the time, alums all the time that are intimidated by that, right? At the end of the day, it, it can be scary, but it is relationship building. It's having conversations, making connections with people. Um, so I often like to say, it's you know, it's maybe instead of saying networking, professional relationship building, um, you know, getting out there, meeting people who work in your field, in your industry, and building a relationship with them. Um, so that's really what it comes down to. Um, and your goal is to create a professional network, right? To have people in your back pocket that you can connect with, can lean on for advice. Uh, if you are actively looking to shift careers or find a job, people who can give you those insights. Um, can be really, really, really helpful. I also say, you know, people often recommend people that they know and that they like, right? Um, there's, you know, the scary statistic, which you'll see all different kinds of stats and, and who really knows like how much of this is really the case. But um, I always say around 80 to 85% of jobs are found through networking. Um, and again, this this statistic is not here to scare you. It's to, it's to to highlight the importance of networking. Um, again, and and oftentimes, um, people find jobs that aren't even posted um, because they'll hear from someone that they know, "Hey, I thought of you," um, and 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 the power of networking to be able to find really meaningful opportunities. Um, so you might learn about things that aren't even posted online, but also you can gain insight um, into different fields and careers, right? Um, networking is everything. <laughs> it's everything. And so when I talk about, for example, job searching, I compare sort of the traditional job search of sort of applying to a million things and seeing, seeing what sticks versus the proactive job search. And that is really all about networking, leaning on people, um, and really making meaningful connections. So there's two kinds of types of networking um, that we often talk about to kind of make it seem a little bit more approachable. One is sort of what you might all think about, which is that sort of formal networking, right? Um, think about networking events that you might go to. Um, alumni relations might have some really awesome events that you can attend to, to network with other alums who have shared affinities with you. Maybe they're, they're from the same city or region. For students as well, um, being able to do that networking, you might go to say like a traditional career fair, you might be doing networking with employers, BU hosts a ton of these types of events, both these large career fairs that we have going on, but also opportunities to meet with companies, um, we'll have networking events where alums and students can meet each other and do some networking, so that might be some of the more formal events that you might do, um, but then there's sort of this like in 
informational, right? This may be more informal way of doing this. Um, for some folks, right, you might hear informational interview and you might hear interview. Okay, so that's an interview. When we talk about informational interviews, we're really talking about these coffee chats, these connections. It's really a conversation that's focused on gaining advice. It is not a job interview. I know it has the word interview in it. You are connecting with someone to, to gain insight on a, a field, an industry, a career path, maybe a company, right? You know someone, maybe you, you connect with someone on BU Connects who works at your dream company and you get to have a conversation with them about what is that like? Um, so we're gonna kind of dive into some networking conversation basics, right? So if I wanna have an informational interview or I wanna reach out to someone on BU Connects and, and make a connection and to build my network, right? The biggest do not, <laughs> do not ask for a job, right? And that might seem intuitive to some that might be like, wait, what? I, I thought that's the whole point, right? Um, remember, it's about relationship building and you're building trust and rapport with people. When you go in hot, right, and you say, hey, do you have a job for me? That feels like, wow, you're not really here to, to make a connection or network. You're really just, you just need something from me, right? So instead, you're asking for advice. Um, I often say, you know, have questions prepared for that person. And this process can happen. It can happen over message, over email. Um, you can ask to have a coffee chat, a Zoom chat. Um, really can be 15, 20 minutes. Doesn't have to be this really long thing. Of course, the in-person connection is always valuable. And you're asking questions, right? Like, how did you get there? Tell me about your career path. What was your journey? You can learn a lot from that. Getting insider perspective about a company or position. Again, if you find that someone works at, at a job or a company or doing a similar role to the type of work you want to be doing, um, getting that insider knowledge can be really, really beneficial. What advice do you have for someone like me trying to get my foot in the door in this industry, right? You see how that sounds different than, do you have a job for me? What would you suggest as the best way to prepare? What kind of professional development should I be doing? What types of skills should I be looking for? And can you recommend anyone else that I can speak with, right? Because now you have an opportunity to expand your network and lean on maybe some of the people in their network. And who knows, right? They might not have something for you, but they can you know, keep you in mind as future opportunities come up, right? So you're not asking for a job, you're gaining advice and you're building trust and rapport. Another piece to this is doing your homework. What do I mean by that, right? Make it easy for the person. When you are making a connection, and again, this could happen in those more formal environments, maybe you're at a career fair, maybe you're at a networking event, or maybe you're reaching out to someone on BU Connects, right? No matter what you're doing, you've done your homework. You have, if it's, you're looking to join a company, um, and again, you're doing that traditional job searching where you're applying, but you're also doing that proactive job searching where you're networking. Those two, that's that's the, the secret sauce, right? Um, you are doing your research, right? You wouldn't go into a job interview and having not looked up the people that are interviewing you or the company. It's the same thing when you're doing networking. And it can also be very impressive to that person. It's like, okay, yeah, they, they know what they're talking about. Um, and they're coming in with informed questions. They're not just asking like, tell me what you do. Like they, they clearly show that they, they're interested and invested. Um, if they have, if you're looking at an open position, definitely make sure you, you share that with them. If you already apply to that position through HR, you can share that with them as well. Um, but you really want to make a, a good impression and make sure that you are doing the work and you are also driving the conversation. I'm going to say this a lot through this presentation. You are in the driver's seat. If you show up to that, to that conversation and you're just waiting for the other person to talk, that's a missed opportunity right? You are the one who is prepared with the elevator pitch, with the questions. It's the onus is really on you to, to drive the conversation. Um, so yeah, really doing your homework is really important. 
And the other piece that I always like to talk about is the follow-up, the thank you, the staying connected. Be timely, right? If you connect with someone or, or they share an opportunity with you within 24 hours, as quickly as you can, um, be specific, share something valuable or interesting that you learned in that connection, right? It personalizes it. It helps them remember, you know, if you connected with them at a large networking event, um, you know, they might've met a lot of people. So really calling back to something specific um, and interesting that you learned in that meeting, not, you know, keeping it not so general, but really personalized. Um, it's a great opportunity also to connect on, on LinkedIn or view connects if you haven't already, right? So keeping that connection going. Um, I always say report on like, if they made a recommend, recommended action, like they said, why don't you talk to this person? Or why don't you look into this um, professional development opportunity? Tell them that you did that thing. Show that you listened to them and that you took action on what they're advising you to do. Um, because that means that you're listening and that you took their advice seriously. And stay in touch, right? I always say networking is about reciprocal, mutually beneficial relationships. You're not just coming to someone when you need something. That can read as really a one-sided relationship. And it's not that trust rapport building that can be really important for networking. Um, so you really wanna stay in touch. Um, you don't wanna risk losing that relationship. Um, and you really wanna, in the same way that you might be asking them for help, Maybe you're you're finding ways to support and help your networks. Um, maybe you're liking things that they post on LinkedIn, or you're you're checking in on how they're doing, um, celebrating their accomplishments. Right? It, it's it's a reciprocal relationship. So that follow up, that thank you, and and the staying connected piece is pivotal in networking. That's great advice. Um, we had a question come in that I think is is worth addressing. Um, Right now, an interesting question from John, who says uh, he's not searching for a job, but rather clients. He started a small consulting firm. Are there specific considerations for networking when trying to build business? Um, I would quickly say, um, from my perspective, it it's really not that different the networking process. It's still about relationship building. It's it's about the the soft sell, not the hard sell. It's about learning from other mm -hmm. people learning about them, not necessarily about, you know, what you'll get right at that moment. It's more about building something that might turn into uh, where someone might become a client later after you've uh, gotten to, you know, have some conversations with them, connected with them on BU Connects and on LinkedIn and um, kind of start, started that those initial phases of that process. Uh, but Colby, do you have any other thoughts about that? Yeah, I agree. They're they're really really similar. I like what you said about the soft sell versus the hard sell. Um, I think folks who are looking to gain clients, it's it, it relationship building. It's really relationship building and building that trust and um, taking the time as you're reaching out to to potential clients to to again get to know them. What are their interests? What's important to them? What matters to them? Um, I really think it, it's it, it it's one in the same in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, let's see, there's a question about, um, should you connect, should you attempt to make a connection on LinkedIn with the person interviewing you? Um, I'm not sure if, if this is pertaining to like an informational interview or more of an actual job interview. Um, Colby, do you have any perspective on that? Yeah, it kind of, it does kind of read if it's like a, a job interview. Mm -hmm. Um, if it's an informational interview, I mean, yes, absolutely. Um, yeah. you want to maybe make that connection. And, and I would always write a note. There's a, a note section when you make a connection and BU Connects has a similar thing where, you know, we encourage you to actually send them a message, um, to kind of personalize, I think with, with jobs and I'll share a story later in the presentation of like how networking has gotten me all of my jobs that I've ever had and all the opportunities and, other things. It, it hasn't just served me jobs, right? It's given me a lot of insight and support in my career. Um, but I think I have always done, like, if I'm applying to a job and this is like my dream job and something I really want, I'm also doing some networking. Um, I usually like to look within my connections first before maybe going straight to the interviewer. Um, I think if you already have an interview lined up, that's great. Um, 
often I would probably lean on the side of like have the interview um, and then, you know, doing that follow up where you've made those connections, you connect with them on LinkedIn. Um, but I've also seen strategies when people are searching for jobs where they'll find the the recruiting manager on LinkedIn or they'll find, um, you know, alums who work at that company at BU Connects, right? So mm-hmm. I'd say it's like, if you do it, do it tastefully. Um, you don't want to just be sort of like um, bombarding a recruiter or a hiring manager's inbox um, because they are getting a lot of that. But sometimes it, that personal touch could make or break whether or not they see your resume. Um, so I would just say as long as you're, you know, thoughtful about it. Um, and if you already have an interview lined up, you probably don't even need to do that connection until after the interview takes place. Um, so it just kind of depends on your goals and your reasoning for connecting with them on LinkedIn, if that makes sense. Great. As with many things, it it kind of depends. It kind of depends. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to um, I'm going to dive into talking about BU Connect for a, a few minutes now. Again, if um, if you're not already on BU Connect, then after this presentation, I hope you'll go to buconnects.com. Uh, you can create an account. There's various ways you can um, sign in through your LinkedIn. You can create an account with your personal email, or if you're a current BU student or an alum who has a BU email account, you can actually sign in with your BU ID, your Kerberos account there. Um, so to uh, to get started, for, for anyone who doesn't know too much about BU Connect, we, um, the platform, it's an online platform for networking and, uh, and community among all BU students, faculty, staff, alumni, anyone in the BU community, basically. Uh, we have over 27,000 members on the platform um, at the moment. Um, 76% of people have checked off on their profiles that they're willing to help in some ways. And there's various ways that people can kind of volunteer to help. But the platform uh, really spans everyone in the BU community from you know over 100 countries and uh, alumni from you know the 1950s all the way through current PhD students. Um, so really spans a huge range of, of people in the BU community, uh, majors, industries. Um, the uh, private messaging on the platform, which I'll talk about in a couple minutes, um, we've had over 37,000 private messages sent on the platform. Um, and there's also a job board that I'll talk about that's had over you know 216,000 um, jobs posted. So it's a great platform uh, to utilize if you're not currently on there. <clears throat> so uh, this is this is a shot of the uh, kind of what the platform looks like right now when you sign in. There's a um, kind of the main news feed. It looks a little bit like a LinkedIn or like a Facebook. But I'm going to dive into some of the specifics um, for some of the features that in terms of networking that might not be as visible if you haven't spent a ton of time um, on the platform. So this is what you see when you log in. Um, uh, here in the, the red box here, this is the um, kind of the main, the main menu. Um, that's where you're going to find the directory, um, the job board, groups, the business directory, um, and kind of all the main areas uh, of, the, of the platform. Also up on the right-hand side, this is where you're going to see if you have notifications. So that's if you have um, messages from other members or if you have other, uh, if you've been tagged in posts or other notifications. That's also where you can easily access your profile um, so you can click your your profile picture. If you don't have a profile picture, you can you can add one. Um, and that's also where you can update your uh, both privacy and security settings. So you can make sure you're getting the notifications that you want to get, and you can um, have you know certain privacy settings there as well. Um, one thing is I know a lot of people access BU Connect on their on their phone or their mobile device. And so the it looks a little bit different. So I did want to show this is kind of what it looks like if you're accessing from your from your phone, either just from a web browser on your phone or from the um, from the app version. Um, so to get to that main menu, it's that the, that little stack of three lines in the in the top left. That's where that you'll pull up the um, the feed and the directory and the job board and all of those main um, main parts of your uh, 
profile. And on the right hand side, that's again where you'll see messages and notifications. Um, now, moving on to the directory, this is really um, kind of one of the big things that we'll be talking about today. And this is a really powerful tool for uh, for members of the platform. And I want to dig in a little bit more than what you might have seen if you haven't spent too much time on BU Connect. So if you go to the directory, um, you'll see uh, something that will resemble this. And um, you can obviously see this main search bar here. That's where you can search for, for any, any keyword search. If you're looking for a specific person or someone that has a certain company or industry in their profile, this will basically search all profile fields. So if you want to kind of just look at a little bit of everything, you can enter the search bar. Um, but a really uh, next level powerful tool is the filters. And so I'm going to talk about that for a, a moment. You see in this filter box here, um, there's many, uh, many filter options. Right now, you're just seeing um, some of the top level ones, but in this screen, uh, I get a little bit more specific. So you'll see um, you can filter by how people want to get involved, mentoring, um, if people are seeking or offering mentorship, and uh, BU and work experience and other education. If you click on the, the little down arrows for each of those menus, that's where you're going to see in the kind of middle and the right hand side of this slide, um, that's where you can get really specific with some of these profile fields. So you can search by BU school and college or year of graduation or major. Um, you can also search by professional interests that people have checked off. So let's say someone um, went to the College of Engineering, but maybe now they work in um, gastronomy or something, you know, anything. Maybe they've set a professional interest that's not necessarily the same as what their uh, what their major was. So you can you can search by some interesting fields here, as well as student organizations, athletics, residents. Um, all of these ways are are different ways that you can identify other terriers that might be interesting to connect with. Um, so if you're searching for someone uh, for a prof on a professional side, you might still find someone that is interesting to you that shares some something similar to to you or what you're looking for, even if it's not you know exactly the industry or the um, the major that you came from. So there's a lot of really interesting ways to search. And then in the work experience, you can look by specific company. Uh, industry or or job function, which is kind of the the type of job. So definitely check that out. Um, so uh, this is just a screenshot of of what it looks like if when you go into a member's um, profile. And so the next part, once you use the directory and you identify some people that um, that look interesting to you based on you know different criteria, then take a look through their profiles, and um, you'll see. Uh, I don't list, you know, my whole profile in this in this slide, but people will can add summaries. They can add their job experience. They can add, um, you know, all of those professional interests and other things. Um, if you uh, are a current BU Connects member and you haven't really filled out your profile, then I strongly encourage everyone to spend five minutes and go into your profile settings and. Just add information that could be helpful for other terriers who might be interested in finding you. And it will help if you're reaching out to other people that they can look at your profile and learn a little bit about you as well. But once you're in someone's profile, um, there's a few things I want to point out here. So the uh, the message button that's in the little red box now, um, if, if you click that, that will take you to a, a direct message uh, window where you can type someone a message. It will go right to them. They'll get a notification um, on the platform as well as um, in their email inbox if they have their, um, their notification settings that way. Um, a similar but interesting way to contact people is through this request help button. Um, and uh, we've we've got an interesting thing where since people can identify areas that they specifically want to help other terriers, 
if you click the request help button, that's going to bring up these custom uh, templates that we've helped um, devise. And you choose the area that the person has um, said they're willing to help. And it'll bring up a template that you can read through. It has some resources, some, uh, some sample language, and that can help you craft the type of message um, that, that you can use if you're not sure, especially if you're someone who hasn't done a lot of this kind of digital networking and you're not sure what to say and what to include in a message like this, um, it includes a little sample. And you can basically go in, edit it however you want, but it gives you some, some tips and ideas and resources that you can click on if you want to learn more. Um, and then it just sends them a message just, just the same way that the other um, process did. Um, I want to point out that um, a little while back, we did uh, another one of these webinars um, with a great alum who did a presentation on how to write a networking email that people will respond to. Um, you can find that on the um, Alumni and Friends Career website. Uh, it's also on our YouTube channel, um, and you'll get all this in a link after the presentation as well. But check that out if you want to see a whole um, a whole presentation about writing networking emails. Um, this on the right hand side. This is an example that kind of shows you this like two or three, two to four sentence short uh, to the point networking message that's a good introduction. You don't want to write, this is similar to what Colby was saying before, you don't want to write paragraph after paragraph in an introductory message. You want to be kind of friendly and to the point and tell them what what you're asking. So, you know, in this in this little example here, uh, you're mentioning kind of briefly who you are, like that, what, how are you, and how are you similar to this person? So you're obviously part of the BU ecosphere. You can say you're, what year you're from BU and, and maybe what, uh, what you studied, if it's relevant to the person you're reaching out to. Um, and then include the, your ask, you know, what are you, uh, what are you looking from them? Are you looking for, you know, 20 minutes to um, to get on a call or to ask them some questions in the message or an email um, and as well as saying kind of what very briefly what it is that you are looking um, that you're looking to do and kind of what's bringing you to reach out in general um, and then uh, you know again keep it very brief and to the point and um, those sort of messages tend to get the best response from not just BU Connect, but really any sort of networking platform or email, because everyone's busy. And if you overload them with too much information or, or uh, you know, really vague questions that people have to spend hours writing an email back to you, then uh, they're less likely to to do that. You want people to have an an opportunity to write a short message back to you and say, sure, I can I can get on a Zoom with you for 20 minutes. What's your availability? So um, so yeah, check out that webinar uh, that I'll link to if you want to see even more in depth about about this topic. And I'll just add too, really quick that like the personalization that Michael's talking about is really pivotal. If you have a shared affinity with them, certainly you already have BU in common. And a lot of um, you know, my alma mater, I want to help people. The second I hear someone went to my alma mater, I'm like, oh my gosh, I already have something in common with you, right? And if you have other affinities, if you're both posse scholars, if you both were in the same fraternity or club, right? You were the same major, really like highlighting the things that you have in common really personalizes it um, and kind of like tugging on their heartstrings a little bit, those like shared experiences, shared interests that you might have, um, can really, really go a long way. So just make sure you're really personalizing. And if you, you know, saw something that they did, like they have a podcast, like personalizing it a little bit to show right. like, why are you interested in reaching out to them specifically? And why should they help you, right? Like people want to help people that they have something in common with. Yeah, absolutely. So um, on this slide, I'm, I'm just briefly going to talk about the mentoring function on BU Connect. So there's um, mentoring, you know, we would consider a part of, of networking. It's kind of a next level of networking. Um, 
So on BU Connect, you'll find in the menu, there's a, um, a mentoring menu item. If you click that, that kind of gives you ways that you can find other people who have offered to be mentors, or if you are looking for someone to be a mentee, you can search for people in different ways right on the platform, as well as through the directory. Um, that's what we would call kind of self, a self-directed mentoring process. There's also um, a few different uh, structured mentoring programs that, that we um, on BU Connect facilitate with different departments around campus. So at, currently um, we have, we're working with, for example, COM and College of Engineering and the, um, the Newberry Center for a, a first generation uh, student networking uh, mentoring program. So we do have some of these structured mentoring programs that you can that you can look into as well. They're more they have some, you know, timing restrictions because they have specific start and end times and that sort of thing. So they're not always available. But if you are looking to get more involved with mentoring, it is something to um, to keep an eye out for. Um, I also wanted to quickly note something really good, uh, Helen, in the Q and A about um, having a mutual connection and naming that mutual connection is again another way to, to personalize. That's huge, right? Like I met with Helen Flagg about her role at BU, and she suggested that I reach out to you. If you can name drop, even better. Um, so with mentoring, um, that is a huge, mentorship is a huge benefit to networking, right? And it is one of the best outcomes you can have. Not everyone's going to be a mentor, um, but these are people in your corner, right? They might have a shared affinity with you, career path. Um, if you're kind of getting started in your career, you can get tips, insights, people who have done it, they've been through it, um, you know, and, and really like being aware, I mentioned this before, that you are, mentees are in the driver's seat. And what I mean by that is the onus isn't on the mentor, right, to, to drive the goals, the sort of timing, the connections. It's really on the mentee to, to create that structure. And I think sometimes in, in mentor-mentee relationships, Mentees don't know that going in. They they kind of expect their mentor to, to be directing. It really is a self-directed thing. So you really need to be thinking about what are my goals and being very specific, you know, smart goals about what you're looking for in, in that relationship. You also have to remember you're surrounded by mentors, right? People that you work with, um, other alums, other students, professors, um, even if you have graduated, right? Getting back in touch with faculty who really made a difference, advisors, um, former supervisors. There's so many people, friends, family, right? That you already have potential mentors. And so don't be afraid to look within your existing network and reconnect with people that you already have, right? So sometimes we talk about networking. It's like, I have to reach out to all these new people. Well, you already have a network. Everyone on the Zoom call has a network. Um, so reconnecting those old and reinvigorating those old relationships. But also putting yourself out there, attending professional networking events can be a really great way to find networks. And if you meet with someone, you have a good chat with them, follow up with them on LinkedIn, remind them how you met them and keep that connection, that relationship going. Um, professional associations, affinity groups, those are really, really great places to find mentors. Um, some professional associations have like mentorship programs for people who are looking to um, make more connections. So look out for those things. Volunteering, I'm, I'm actually the co-chair of the mentoring, which is kind of funny, I'm talking about mentorship, subcommittee um, in my professional association in career services. Um, by volunteering and getting involved in my professional association, I'm showing people that I do good work and I'm automatically meeting people across the region, the country, in my network who do what I do. Um, and these are people who could be in my corner, right? And can vouch for me in the future but also can be really great people to, to, to know and, and have. Um, and then again, like the ask, just making sure it's the right fit. Um, sometimes, you know, people might not have time to, to, to support you in the ways that you might be looking and just being really clear of what you're looking for and why you're choosing them specifically. Um, so all of that's really important. And again, 
the key is reciprocation. If you're open to helping others, there's a strong chance that they'll help you back, right? So really thinking about that piece. And really quickly, I just want to share, I mentioned before that oh, I've gotten all my jobs through mentors, through networking. Um, it can be a game changer. I had, um, yeah, one of my mentors helped me find the current job that I have, um, worked on my resume, helped me set up an informational interview with someone who also works at BU in another career office. That person also helped me with my resume, helped me think about my approach in the job search. And even if that person didn't have a job for me, they were still supporting me um, and giving me advice, right? And then I even had a mentor when I was having to make a decision on what job I wanted. I had two offers. They really helped me kind of figure out like what I was looking for, helped me kind of weigh the pros and cons. And they even helped me negotiate my salary when I was having that imposter syndrome of, oh, well, they gave me a little bit more, so that's okay. And my mentor said, no, 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 um, go back and, and you know, be confident. And they were coaching me. They were mentoring me. Um, and this is someone that I've built a relationship. They're a former supervisor who I've stayed in touch with. Um, and again, it, it's just, it's not just about finding a job. It's people who are in your corner who can give you that advice. And, and you're not just reaching out when you need something. You're really investing in the relationship. I think that that's so that's so key what you say about it. Like we said before, it is networking really just is relationship building. Um, but I also love that you your idea of look look within your current circles. Um, mentor mentoring doesn't have to be you know some brand new outside connection. Um, one other thing I'll mention regarding BU Connects. Um, even though there is the the function on BU Connects to click a button and say, basically, will you be my mentor? What we actually recommend is starting going through the more informal messaging, the direct messaging, or using one of the templates that I mentioned before, just to strike up a conversation um, and to start more casually than, than going to someone that you've never interacted with before and, and saying, can you be my mentor? Because that's uh, people don't quite know what to make of that. So right. start start a little slower. <laughs> um, should I, I quickly mention the two questions in the chat? Um, the how to find volunteer opportunities. Mm -hmm. I always say look within your your professional associations. Um, there's even there's something called a handshake in the resources section called what can I do with this major? And if you scroll, you search like a field or industry or major and you scroll all the way down, it actually provides a list of professional associations within that major industry. Mm -hmm. um, but doing some research and then seeing if there's like committees you can join or things like that can be really, really great. Or volunteering, getting involved with alumni associations and with BU, um, there's a lot of ways to give back, which I know Michael knows a lot more than I do about that, but that's really great. Someone asked about social capital, um, where you might not have a family network, you might not have social capital. We actually have a BU alum um, hosting a social capital series. So if you go to Handshake and you look at events and you search social capital series, the whole series is focused on that. So I highly recommend folks attend. They're on Tuesdays at five o'clock um, in February, February 6th, 13th, and 20th. Um, so again, if you want to learn a little bit more about social capital, um, but for folks who don't have those networks, that's where I find that some of these like alumni groups, affinity groups, um, conferences, professional associations within your field helps you access those things without needing those family connections. And also BU has a ton of resources, right? Um, again, professors, advisors, thinking about people that you already know outside of your family, um, can be really, really helpful. But if you're starting from scratch or you feel like you're starting from scratch, that's okay. Um, putting yourself out there um, and, and joining some of those groups, getting involved can, can make a difference. And I'll just quickly add that um, in terms of how, how can a mentor-mentee relationship be reciprocal in that sort of scenario, it, it's not all about the mentee providing anything for the mentor. Sometimes for a mentor who's maybe a bit older and not, you know sometimes they want to know what is it uh what is it like as a let's say a 20 something what they want to just get more information about that experience that can be what you're offering them it doesn't have to be 
uh, sort of a, an exact tit for tat sort of thing. So I think everyone has something to offer, even if it's not a tangible thing. It's your perspective, your background. Um, everyone's got something. Um, let's see. So now I'm going to just quickly talk about the um, both the groups and events um, menu items on BU Connects because these are related to networking. So if you go into groups and networks, you're going to see uh, different categories of groups that we have on the platform. And many of these will connect to actual in-person um, or live events. So uh, for example, one of our biggest um, areas of, of groups is regional networks. So we have multiple uh, networks across the United States as well as international, where if you join those groups on BU Connects, you're going to hear about events that are happening in those communities. So even if you're a student, but you're thinking about, you know, moving somewhere else after you graduate where we have a network, uh, join that group. You'll learn about events. A lot of them are networking uh, or career oriented events or just social events to to get to know people. Um, also, the events page on BU Connects will will pull in events from the BU alumni uh, calendar. So that's just one more way to learn about um, uh, webinars like this and other things that are going around um, in Boston or around the world. Um, as we mentioned, there is a job board that um, a nice thing about it is that we do pull in events from uh, the Handshake platform, but uh, BU Connects members can also uh, post their own jobs um, right on the platform. So there are some jobs posted on the BU Connect, Connects job board that don't necessarily appear on Handshake or elsewhere. If you are someone who, if you're hiring or some, there's a job opening in your department and you want other BU uh, students and alumni to hear about it, uh, jobs and internships, you can post it right on the BU Connects job board for other people to see. You can also post it in the in the main discussion feed as well. So check check those out. Um, all right. So we don't want to completely ignore um, that another great networking platform is LinkedIn. Um, we consider BU Connects to be uh, a partner to LinkedIn. There's some things that you're going to find on BU Connects. It is, it's it's that kind of insular network where everyone on BU Connects is part of the BU community. Um, so there's a, a kind of a, a safety there, a knowledge that if someone reaches out to you on BU Connects, it's not just spam. They, they already have that BU connection. Everyone is vetted who uh, joins BU Connects. But LinkedIn obviously is a huge platform, has a lot of uh, value and benefit and a lot of opportunity for, for you to use that for networking. So one thing I want to point out um, is the BU alumni group on LinkedIn. So if you are an alum and you're on LinkedIn, uh, join the alumni group. Um, and there are there are posts on there. People use it in very similar ways. It's It's just another networking tool. And you can hear sometimes people post job openings on the LinkedIn group. Um, or you know questions um, or events. So just another great a great tool for you um, is that that BU alumni group. If you're a student, you can't join yet. You have to wait till you are uh, officially an alum, but you'll you'll get there soon. Great. And another place in addition to the BU alumni group is this. Um, LinkedIn alumni tool, if you go to Boston University's LinkedIn page, right, you go to the search, type Boston University, go to the page, you'll see, you know, you have the homepage, and then you kind of toggle all the way to where it says alumni, um, which you'll see on this page, a screenshot on this page. It's a really, really cool tool in that you can access alums on LinkedIn, and you can filter by you know what city they are in, what organization they work for. Maybe you're like, I really want to work for Google. I want to find everyone at BU who I have I'm connected with, or I have a second connection with, or a third connection with um, that is at Google. Um, maybe I want to look by my major. I want to find other film and TV folks, right? Um, so there's so many different filters. You kind of have to like scroll um, to see those. And you can do all kinds of different searching. You can use the general search tool, which is the search alumni by title. 
keyword or company, or you can specifically go to say like where they work, add it there. Um, so you can play with filters. I always say like your first connections are the best, right? Because those are people you are directly connected to. Second connections are also great because someone that you're connected to is connected to them. Third is kind of like twice removed, less personal. Um, so it's always great if you have maybe like a second connection with that, with that person. But again, another great place to access alums and find things that you have in common with them. Um, <clears throat> we have a few questions, but I'm, I'm just going to save those for a minute because we're almost done with our um, the, the slides here. So just another thing to point out, you, you're all, if you're here, you are on an alumni career um, webinar. So we have a whole on-demand library of these. So if you didn't know, the, um, the easiest way to find those is if you go to bu.edu slash alumni, uh, you're going to see um, the career resources page, go there. You can even filter um, the specific uh, webinars that you see by category. So you can look at all of them or you can go just by um, certain certain categories. We have over a hundred of these career webinars that we've done over the years and there's a lot of great information. So uh, check those out. Um, you can watch them on demand um, as uh, as you as you need to. A really good resource. Um, Let's see. Oh, yeah. So uh, a few more questions. If you have any other questions, we have a few more minutes. So enter those into the, the Q&A. Um, but yeah, I see a question from Cindy who asks, uh, when attending networking events, sometimes they ask for your job title, put on your name tag. She's a recent MPH grad and currently seeking employment. What would be the best thing to put on the name tag without just saying I'm unemployed? Um, and, you know, I might just say, uh, recent grad, um, re recent recent grad of the of the program or the school that you're coming from. That's uh, most people are not going to hold it against you if you're a recent grad and you, you're unemployed. So that that's one simple way that I think is is a very easy and people know if you're a recent grad, you're probably looking looking for work. Um, but but Coley, do you have any other ideas there? Yeah, I think recent grad is great. Um, you know, if you want to shout out public health or like your industry on there mm -hmm. as well to show, um, especially if it's like a general networking event. Um, so people know like at least your your field, your industry could be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a bit of a bit of fake it till you make it. Um, <laughs> so you know without without misrepresenting yourself, you can put you can put something on there which is the where your trajectory is leading you, even if you're not a hundred percent there yet. Um, M Monesh has a question. Is there time to network at a BU hockey game? <laughs> I've never been. Um, maybe <laughs> I would say, uh, you know, you're probably going to be focused on, on the game, but you never know. You, uh, you might be able to, if you're crowded in with other people around you, it's a great upbeat environment. Um, as long as hopefully BU's doing okay in the game. Um, but I might not think of it exactly as networking, but it's a good way to to meet the people in your surroundings and find out, you know, if they're especially if they're other students, just ask their name, see what what uh, what college they're from, what within BU, um, or if you're an alum, again, just ask the people around you. Oh, were you? Uh, are you in school? Uh, are you an alum? Which program did you do? So, I mean, I I wouldn't necessarily try to go too in depth with networking at a BU hockey game. But I think I think on a small scale you, you could. Um, and then another question, um, Monesh is posting on LinkedIn for personal branding. Should I post the same exact post on BU Connects on the same day so BU alumni can see my posts? Um, I would say that's kind of a personal preference. Um, I don't think it's n necessary to post on the same Day, you could maybe stagger it a little bit um, and you know that way maybe someone will see it on if someone's on LinkedIn but not every day they might see it one day and same thing if someone's on BU Connect but they don't necessarily log in every day if you if you're posting a few days or a week later um, then you've got a, a chance for that to sort of stagger the messaging out a little bit 
Um, yeah. And this question again about, you know, being laid off, you know, what do you put on the name tag? Again, I wouldn't, no one needs to know that you were laid off. <laughs> mm -hmm. They don't need to know that. Um, that's personal information. You're just, you know, a, a BU alum, you know, whether it's a recent grad or, or BU grad looking for an opportunity. Um, so again, that piece about maybe putting your industry on mm -hmm. there um, can be a really great way to, to do that. But no one needs to know <laughs> that information. Right. Yeah. I think putting the industry, that's a perfect way to, to do that. Um, keeping track of contacts and networking discussions can be difficult. Oh yeah. Thoughts on how to organize and keep track of conversations. That's a really good question. Huh? I don't know I mean, if I have a yeah, go for it, Michael. Yeah, I would it some people love Excel and some people hate it, but I would say <laughs> using creating an, a, a simple Excel spreadsheet or Google Sheets. Um, if you're doing a lot of reaching out to people and doing conversations or copy chats or just messaging, that can be a fairly easy way to keep track of of people. I know some people hate spreadsheets, so that's that's fine. Um there are other there's a a lot of different kind of um, productivity uh, tools, a lot of free tools online um, that you can find. So I, I think search around and you'll find something that works for you, but sometimes it's as simple as a list, a Word doc or, or a Google um, sheet or something like that. I don't know, if, Colby, if you have any other ideas. Yeah, I mean, I think, um... Excel is definitely great. Google Sheets is great. Um, I mean, maybe just a quick Google search, maybe see what tools you might be able to find. But I also think like um, keeping up with people through like if you've messaged them, like that's always a good history of like, oh, I have a, ch a, hi a chat history on LinkedIn. Um, you know, I always like to create time in my week to think about, you know, what am I doing for my professional development? Have I connected with any of my mentors in the, in the past month or, you know, whatever it may be, and then kind of go back to that. So it, if you're someone who likes to keep track of those things, I think any type of spreadsheet or list can be helpful. Um, and then kind of creating a networking plan for yourself of how, how are you going to do that? Right. Creating goals mm -hmm. for yourself. Yeah. Um, there's a question we, we will, uh, yes, I can share the slides by email afterwards. Um, and we're, we're at an hour here. So I think just last question um, was any guidance on building a schedule or the planning process of applying to new jobs? Um, Colby, do you have any ideas? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, certainly if, you know, you can make an appointment with us at the Center for Career Development. Um, we do offer, you know, one-on-one um, -on -one appointments to kind of help students plan their approach. A lot of this is personalized based on, you know, who you are, what your goals are. Um, there are like career tracking tools on, you know, we have some on Handshake that you can check out. Um, there are platforms to keep track of jobs that you've applied to. Um, career Shift is one that comes to mind. And you can kind of, you know, make sure you have an organized approach. Um, but certainly, if you if you're having any trouble, feel free to make an appointment with with us through Handshake, and we're happy to help you navigate the process. Great. And is that available to students and alumni? Yes. Yeah. Great. Where in in case alumni especially are not uh, too familiar with Handshake, um, do they just go to your website to get started? Yeah. Um, they can go to our website. Um, to learn more about how to, to make appointments or how to access Handshake. Um, so bu.edu slash careers, mm -hmm. if you don't know where to get started. Um, and then if you're new to Handshake, um, you know, feel free to also connect with us at the Center for Career Development. We're happy to help you get started, um, how to access Handshake, how to use it. Um, we're happy to be a resource. Great. And, and yes, Handshake uh, is an is an online platform, a separate platform, primarily for for job uh, job postings, um, but as well as events and uh, appointments with the career office. Yep. So, um, well, thank you so much, um, Colby. This was, I think, really helpful. I hope people, you know, got got something out of it and learned a bit about networking and hopefully uh, learned a bit more about how to use BU Connect to. Uh, uh, greater extent than you might have known before. Um, we appreciate everyone joining us today on the webinar. Um, the BU alumni relations team, we do 
these career webinars uh, every month. So we're working on new programs for the um, upcoming spring. Uh, keep an eye on the alumni events calendar, uh, which you can also see on the BU Connect and um, as well as the website bu.edu slash alumni. You'll see an events link. Um, we'll, we'll have more information about those soon and, and reach out to um, the Center for Career Development um, on Handshake for um, you know, additional appointments. So thank you everyone for coming. Um, really appreciate it and hope you have a great day wherever in the world you are. Thank you, everyone. Take care.